if you want to understand Bible prophecy, you have got to know where the nations of the earth today are mentioned in the Bible. That is an absolute key. You will never be able to understand Bible prophecy, especially the books of the Old Testament, the prophetic books, unless you know where the nations are today that are being talked about. And for that key, I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again. You need to obtain this book, In Search of the Origin of Nations. It's about 500 pages. It's not that expensive. You can obtain it from Amazon. In Search of the Origin of Nations. It will go through all of the nations in the world today, where they are and where they are in Bible prophecy, the names of them as used in the Bible. And another key is to know who the German people are. This book, The Great German Nation, about 300 pages, showing to you that the great German people are the descendants of the Assyrians. And for the nations of Northwestern Europe, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Holland, France, Belgium, Norway, the Anglo-Saxon people of the United States and the British Commonwealth are the descendants of the ten tribes of Israel. The ten tribes of Israel were taken into captivity by the Assyrian Empire from about 745 B to 718 BC. They eventually migrated north and into Eastern Europe, then across Europe. The Assyrian people became the German people of today. And the House of Israel, the ten tribed House of Israel, are indeed the nations that I just mentioned to you. That is a key in understanding Bible prophecy. And the tribe of Joseph that had Ephraim and Manasseh they became the British Commonwealth and the United States of America. They are the people of Ephraim or Ephraim and Manasseh. We are going into the book of Hosea. Much of Bible prophecy is dual. It has a dual application for the time back then in Hosea's day and for the end time where Jesus said in Luke chapter 21 and about verse 20, 21, 22, that indeed at the end time that all things that are written may be fulfilled. There are many, many prophecies that are indeed related to the last 42 months of this age before Jesus Christ the Messiah returns. We are going into the book of Hosea and we're going to read some very plain words from the Lord to you people. Let me mention again to you people of Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, France, Holland, Belgium, the British Commonwealth, Anglo-Saxon people, the British Commonwealth and the United States of America. This is to you, believe it or not. When it comes about, you will know that you heard it, that you were told that the prophecy of Hosea was spoken to you in these last days to do with the last 42 months of the end of this age. Hosea chapter 1, I'm going to pick up the verses here that are the key verses that we need to know that how it is applied to the very end time of this age. Hosea chapter 1 verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, and he said certain things. Verse 5, and it shall come to pass at that day, this is at the end time that I will break the bow of Israel in the Valley of Jezreel. Well, that's a second application, that the armaments of the people of Israel, the nations that I just mentioned to you, are going to be broken. 
Verse 7, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God. Well, at that particular time, in Hosea's time, that was a prophecy that had to do with then. That Judah, the house of Judah, comprising of the Jews, the Benjamites and the Levites were going not to be conquered by the Assyrian people. That was for back then. We'll see very soon that that is not the case at the end time. Verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, You are not my people, there shall it be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. There's going to come a time, all you nations of Israel, when God is going to basically say, You are not my children, and I am going to punish you for your sins and iniquities and lawlessness. But then, not very far into that punishment, you will be rescued and delivered from it. And then you will be again the children and the people of God. Verse 11, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. It has never happened, friends. This has never happened, not in the 20th century. This has never happened since there was a house of Israel and a house of Judah. It has never happened. The two sticks of Ezekiel 37 have not yet been put together, but they will be. Then the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land and great shall be the day of Jezreel. Well, great will be the second coming of Jesus Christ. When the house of Israel and the house of Judah will appoint themselves a one head, we have seen in other videos and other prophecies like Jeremiah that David will be resurrected when Jesus returns. When the Messiah comes, Jesus will be resurrected. And not Jesus, Jesus will resurrect David when he comes. And they, he will be the head of Israel all of the tribes of Israel, all 12 tribes of Israel, and the 12 apostles, as Jesus promised in the Gospels, will be over each tribe, an apostle over each tribe. And so it will indeed come to pass that they will be gathered together, the children of Judah and the children of Israel, and will have one head. They will indeed have Jesus as the main, of course, and the most important head, but they will also have David resurrected in the resurrection that takes place at the coming of Christ, and he will be their king. And the twelve apostles under David, ruling a tribe of Israel. Chapter 2 and verse 8. For she shall not know that I gave her cause. She does not know. You people of Israel, the nations of Israel, you don't really know that it's God that has given you the corn, the wine, and the oil, and multiplied you with silver and gold, which you prepared for Baal, which you used in committing idolatry and worshipping false gods and false religions and even false Christianity. Verse 9, Wherefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof, and I will recover my wool and my flax given to cover your nakedness. Yes, God's going to take it away from us because of our sins that we will not repent of doing and practicing, then all of these riches that we have are going one day to be taken away from us. Verse 10, and now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. When this happens, nobody is going to be able to deliver you nations of Israel from the punishment the Lord is going to execute upon you. Verse 11, And I will also cause all of her mirth to cease, and all of her feast days, her new moons and her Sabbaths and her solemn feasts. These are not the feasts of the Lord. They are your feasts, what you call Sabbaths, what you call festivals. What you call feasts and festivals are not what God calls the proper feasts and festivals that you should be observing. And he will take then all of that you have made up in worshipping him with 
all kinds of different feasts that are not in the Bible, that are from Baal and from paganism, and he's going to take them away from you. Verse 12, and I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, where she has said, these are my rewards from my lovers that have given me. I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incest to them, all of your pagan practices and ways. You want to go onto my website, keithhunt.com, and you want to read the book under the section called God's Feasts and Sabbath. And you need to read that book written by a Catholic bishop, and it is called Christian Feasts and Customs, and he lays it right on the table. He puts the cards on the table, and he tells you where all of these things come from that you have adopted as so-called Christian religion. So God will visit us because of all of these days and feasts of Balaam, and he will take away all the precious things that we have and all that we have done by going after our lovers and forgetting God. In verse 13, he says, you did all these things and forgot about me. Therefore, verse 14, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comforting unto her. Yes, first of all, God is going to have to punish you nations of Israel and Judah, bring you into the wilderness, and then eventually, as we will see in the book of Hosea, he will speak comfortable things to you, and you will be rescued, and you will be restored, and you will be the people of God as God intended you to be from the beginning that you would worship him in spirit and in truth. You would keep his ways, his commandments, and be a light to the nations of the earth. And one day, indeed, that is going to be fulfilled, but not before you are going to have to learn some mighty big lessons because you have forsaken your God. Verse 16, and it shall be at that day, says the Lord, you shall call me Ishi, you shall and shall call me no more Bailey, for I will take away the names of Balaam out of your mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by those names. He's going to take all of the pagan things out of your religion, yes, out of your Christian religion. He's going to take them away, and you won't remember all of those wrong customs and teachings. Verse 18, and in that day will I make a covenant for them, with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword, and the battle out of the earth. It's a time when they will learn war no more. There will be no more learning war, and performing war. It's the time of the beginning of the reign of Jesus Christ on this earth for a thousand years, and the end of warfare will come about. And he says here, I will make you to lie down safely. You are not lying down safely today. You have armaments. You have weapons to defend yourself because you feel you are not safe. And at that time, at that time, you will be safe. You will no need for nuclear weapons, no need for bombing airplanes, no need for rockets, no need for all of these armaments because you will then be dwelling safe. And I will betroth you unto me forever, says the Lord, verse 19. And I will betroth you unto me in righteousness. And that is the commandments of God, my friends. And in judgment, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. And I will even betroth you unto me in faithfulness. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day I will hear, and I will hear. The heavens and the earth shall hear. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil. And they shall hear these things. And indeed the... I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that didn't obtain mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, you are my people. And they shall say, you are my God. Yes, the time is coming when you people of Israel and Judah will know who the true God is, and you will say that he is your God, and he will say, you are my people.